Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Ask Kate, brought to you by the Children's Tumor Foundation. I'm going to go over today another really interesting email that I received last week. I don't have permission from the writer to share their personal information, but I will be reviewing the questions that were asked because I think they were really diverse and interesting and that the answers mm. might be interesting to more than just the person who emailed me. Mm -hmm. So let's start. So I heard from this young woman who was asking just a number of different questions. So I'm going to share the question and then how I responded one at a time. So the first question was that she was wondering if taking estrogen could cause tumors to start growing. So this young woman lives with NF1 and she had heard or read somewhere that taking estrogen, which is a hormone, could cause tumors to start growing. And if so, will it increase their growth rapidly? Now, she didn't define whether she was talking about increasing numbers of dermal neurofibromas or the growth of a plexiform or the growth of existing tumors. So I wasn't able to speak too specifically, but I did want to share and shared with her as well that it's possible that estrogen can cause an increase in tumor growth in adults with NF1. We know that there's often an increase in tumor growth during puberty and pregnancy, which shows a certain hormone sensitivity. However, it's a very complex issue that really has not been fully studied and more research is needed and being done. So it's really not as simple as saying estrogen causes tumors to grow. So before considering any kind of hormone therapy, um, I always recommend a conversation with your NF provider so that you can really discuss risks and benefits for, um, for that treatment. So her next question was asking a little bit about the um, use of alternative therapies. So she asked specifically about curcumin, which um, I imagine is something that a lot of you have heard about. If not, you could Google that, although I don't normally recommend Googling, and you'll see that um, there's a lot of people in the NF1 community who think there might be some benefit to taking a curcumin supplement or having a diet, like a Mediterranean diet that's rich in curcumin. Um, so again, this is an area where there simply is not sufficient research to know whether there's any impact on tumor growth with a supplement like this. Um, there are a lot of anecdotal stories, meaning just stories from people living with NF1 who really believe that there's been a benefit to them personally um, from adding this supplement, which is something you can just buy over the counter at your local drugstore. Um, and, and while there is unlikely to be a negative impact by making some kind of a diet change or adding curcumin um, to your regular you know, vitamin routine. Again, I'm always careful to say that I really strongly recommend speaking with your NF doctor before making any changes to your diet or supplements, because while a lot of these supplements by themselves can be pretty benign um, and not have a, um, a lot of danger associated with them, there are a lot of cross reactions between supplements and natural remedies and medication prescriptions that you might be getting that you might not be aware of. And so just having that open conversation with your provider and letting them know that you're interested in some of these other things is going to be really important. And hopefully they're open and receptive to your interest in alternative therapies and able to really have a good conversation with you about that. So along those same lines, her last question was asking about the use of vitamin D. Um, it is generally thought to be a good idea for individuals with NF1 to take a vitamin D supplement. Vitamin D levels in those with NF1 do tend to run quite low, and there can be some risk for having low vitamin D. Um, vitamin D supports a healthy immune system and healthy bones. It helps you absorb calcium. There are different reasons why we need to have vitamin D in our system. Um, what exactly that low impact of... or why there's low vitamin D levels for individuals with NF1 specifically is not fully understood. But again, I would recommend that if you've never had your vitamin D level checked, you might ask your primary care doctor or your NF doctor to check that and see if a vitamin D supplement would be a good idea for you. Okay, so hopefully this was helpful and answered some questions that maybe you had, or maybe it triggered a question. Maybe you thought, oh, she, she didn't talk about this. I was wondering about this alternative therapy. I was wondering about that issue. Please, again, leave a comment down below. Send me an email. Um, I would love to hear from all of you. Have a wonderful day, and thanks so much for tuning in.